vehicle? Of course it is. Read your Bible as interpreted by experts. I think that view is headed for a deep mischief. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Hegg. With me, of course, my lovely assistant, Rob Van Hoff. What is up, Rob? We're going to make this one somewhat short, if possible, if at all possible. Um, yeah, we got uh, we got a good one. This is one we haven't touched on in a really long time. So we're going to touch on it today. If you want to send us a video, please do so. See Hegg at Torresource.com. C-H-E-G-G at Torresource.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really does help us. All right. Um, you have anything to say before we jump into this uh, lovely video? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, you need to, uh, yeah, listen before obey. Listen before you do. And this is people, they hear a little bit and then they start doing without, it's like, you get, it's like interrupting God. It's like, he's teaching you something. You're like, oh, okay. And then they like stop listening and they go behave a certain way. And it's like. This video, and I know that the people in uh, YouTube land and, and podcast land haven't heard, uh, seen this yet, but I have no clue what we're talking about. But this video genuinely makes me sad. It makes me sad um, because I, I, what I get from, you know, I want to preface this whole video with I, what I get from these people is they are genuine. They love the Lord. They're really trying. They're, you know, they, they have a family order that they have been following now, and it's become their tradition. Um, and they're, and they're, they're, they're not, um, it's not they're, malicious. They're not afraid to be different. You know what I mean? They're, right. they're, they're, they're the, the idea of, of being Whatever different they, because yeah. of commandments doesn't bother them. You know, Whatever they, God they, says so they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I, I love that. The, the problem is, is that they have, um, fallen into listening to just any old person and, um, you know, <sighs> just a, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole bunch, right? It's uh, It doesn't take much to get off into no man's land. Let's go ahead. I'm going to kick over here. If I can find the video, I'm going to kick over here to the other view. And here we go. All right. Here we go. My husband and I use the moon as our calendar. Not only that, but we keep a lunar Sabbath. I've had many people write us off and tell us we're loony for going back to our roots and following a lunar Sabbath. But the information is out here for anyone to research. What we do know is Monday through Sunday are Gregorian calendar days made and appointed by the Catholic Church's very own Pope Gregory in 1582. So for us, our seventh day, according to the moon, can fall on any Gregorian day of the week, but it will always be the seventh day, according to the moon. We also know that the Gregorian calendar days change because of leap years and extra days added to the ends of months or even taken away. It's inconsistent. Whereas the moon is called faithful by its maker. Genesis 1.14 tells us the moon was given to mark our days, signs, and seasons. The word seasons in its original language Hebrew is moedim, which means appointed times. Our appointed times are the seven feast days and the Sabbath day according to scripture. We use the moon as our standalone calendar. That's biblical. We trust that Yahweh commands the moon to be faithful. Come back for part two. Oh, there's so much here. Um... I don't know if this is going to be as Let's quick just, as we can want. We, to can be. I just start with something? Please. It, she mentions uh, Genesis one fourteen. She right. said they use the moon exclusively because that's what the Bible says, and that's false. Right. Either she's never looked it up herself, um, and she's just trusted someone else, um, or she's not an attentive reader. But it's clearly Genesis one fourteen. Let there be lights, plural. Um, to separate the day from the night. And then it says, let them be. Right. Let them yeah. be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. Um, and so, so the idea that they use the moon exclusively, um, it, it, wait a minute, the sun and the stars are equally right part of the timekeeping mechanism not just the moon and so when when she's emphasizing we only use the moon 
you stop listening to scripture and you're latching on to a stray teaching. It's a teaching that is going to cause people to stray from the text of scripture for the sake of, you know, God's commandments separate us from the rest of the world. But seeking separation just because you're separate from the rest of the world doesn't mean you're following God's commandments. Right. If you have a path that separates you from the rest of the world, that doesn't mean you're obeying God. Right. Yeah, look at look at the Catholic monks. Um, hang on just a sec. So uh, let's go back. I want to so she's talking about the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar here, and uh, she drops this tidbit. Made and appointed by the Catholic Church's very own Pope Gregory in 1582. So for Okay, so she's talking about the Gregorian the implementation of the Gregorian calendar. The thing that she doesn't mention, however, is that before the implementation of the Gregorian calendar, you had the Julian calendar as the standard calendar. Uh, and the 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 Julian can, calendar went into a fact before uh, Christ uh, came to Earth, and it was solidified in the uh, in the Roman culture. I believe it was made law in eight CE. So uh, Yeshua was alive at that point. But the point is, is that there was no there was no change. Um, and this is you know I think that there's a lot of mis- misconception here. I think that the 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 reason that the, that this is considered for me to be wackadoo is because it goes against. All historical data that we have, it goes against all um, manner of, uh, we know that in the first century, now these people might, you know, and when I say these people, I'm, I'm just saying like Lunar Sabbath people in general, they might push on this. But in the first century, we know that the Jewish, uh, the Jewish sects were following a seven day work week calendar. And the reason why is because the Romans say that they're lazy for taking Saturday, the, the day of Saturday off. So, the, so yeah, yeah. So the point is, is that within the first century where Yeshua was, he was going to the synagogue on Saturday, not on some lunar Sabbath. The other uh, point that needs to be made here is that when the Catholic Church, and that's even wrong, I, we shouldn't say that, it, when, when the church itself moves uh, throughout time, and this is we've talked about this numerous times, but there's a gradual progression from a Saturday worship to a Saturday night worship, so that the Gentiles who were slaves could worship with the church because the because slaves had to work on on Shabbat. If they were you know Roman slaves had to work on Shabbat, so they are starting to meet on Saturday nights. This eventually gets uh, gets pushed over to to Sunday, which somewhat makes sense in their theology. Theology, within their theology, it makes perfect sense because Christ rises on Sunday, so they start meeting on Sunday morning to uh, to to eat together, so on and so forth. So, I mean, this move is a gradual one. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, Constantine said, "Hey, now we're going to worship on Sunday." Anyway, all of this to say, this is well documented. The the move from Saturday to Sunday is a huge thing within yeah, church yeah, history. Totally. And so you're telling me that, so which one came first? Was it the lunar Sabbath? You think that Israel was keeping a lunar Sabbath, and then all of a sudden, at some point in time, they said, hey, we're going to fix it to a day of the week, which is going to be Saturday, and we have no historical data to show that? There's not one scrap of evidence to show that they moved it to Sunday, but or, or to, a, to a Saturday, yet when the Sabbath, according to the church, moves from Saturday to Sunday— it is a major event within the. I mean, it's huge. Everybody knows about it. Why? Yeah, yeah. Because beca- because nobody's just going to lay down and say okay. So I remember. Just, we, I remember way back, Rob and Caleb show like so ten years ago. We we came up with the term collective amnesia. I think remember? right. Yes. <laughs> well, here's another point too, Caleb. Is it the there was a lot of sectarianism in the first century. They disagreed on all sorts of things. Right. They disagreed on the counting of the Omer, for example. But they, there's no ancient dispute as to when the Shabbat is. And even exactly. the enemies, like you said, even the enemies of Israel, like in the Maccabean era, the uh, Antiochus and his, you know, the Syrians, they attacked on the Sabbath. So even the enemies knew when the Sabbath was. It was predictable So they, because they planned attacks. Right. Um, but we don't even need to go that far forward. We go all the way to the Torah. There's no way in her, this lady's worldview that they can keep count the Omer. It doesn't matter if they do it like the Sadducean way or the Pharisaic way. It doesn't matter. You can't get the 50 days, right? You can't have seven sevens and have the 50th day 
be actually 49 days and the 50th day because the lunar cycle will never let you do that. It only works when you're counting seven, 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 right. seven, and it crosses over the lunar cycle in the same way that the Jubilee year, it's seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years, seven, right? Seven times seven years and the 50th year. So that these people are, it, it's it's, not I only get that, the sense they're on, pious, on, but they're, they've, they are, they've been, um, Lack they don't knowledge. discern. They right. they are pious, and it sounds like very gentle hearted, and want to want to share what they believe is true, but it's flat out wrong. It's wrong. Okay, hang on just a second. And you their can, sincerity you, doesn't mean it's true. You didn't you didn't uh, finish that that uh, line of thought because oh. you're right. You can't you can't get the the omer counted correctly. But beyond that, the, the command is not simply to rest on the Sabbath. The, the command is to work s- six days. Oh, exactly. So you, you yeah, work exactly. six days, and then is a Sabbath. And it, it, according to the lunar Sabbath, you have to have what they call an extended day of worship, an extended worship day. And that is you have a Sabbath, and then there's an extended the worship moon. day. The, bef- yeah. There's a day in between that and the new moon. There's like you can but never you don't get know. it may or may not be. It, yeah, it could be a different way. Exactly. But the and point so then is, you need an authority to call it. You're right. And then that's why I remember this was over 25 years ago when the lunar Sabbath was kind of going through our neck of the woods. They couldn't. You had people that were lunar Sabbath advocates, but they couldn't agree on how <laughs> to. So it was already sectarianism. It was already right. turning into sectarianism among the lunar Sabbath people. Right. And then you have problems like the day of atonement, which is called a Sabbath and is based solely on the sun because it's a day. It's a 10th day. It's not based on a seven. And, and you know, it's my boy is wicked smart. All right. And the day is the day itself is a solar event. It's it because right. in the Torah throughout, it says when this, like a, you pay a man on the day for his wages. Be, and then it says before the sun goes down. So you yeah. can't, if you, when the sun goes down, that's the end of the day, and that's marked not by the moon, but by the sun going down is the end of the day. We, there, there's, there's, I mean, we could go on. The, the references that are used to a, attempt to support a lunar Sabbath, Ezekiel 46.1, I think, is one of the big ones that they use. Um, none of these are, are like a slam dunk, like, oh, yeah, like they were using some kind of a, a lunar calendar. No, they're, they're all quite easy to look at and say, oh, well. Have you ever is- met a lunar Sabbath advocate who had competency in biblical Hebrew? No, and I've never met a. Uh, uh, here's the thing, I've never met a lunar Sabbath a- advocate who doesn't. It, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the of. No, I'm not saying that everybody's like this, but I personally, I've met <clears throat> people who hold the lunar Sabbath. Every single person I've met who holds the lunar Sabbath, that's the tip of the iceberg sticking out of the water. If you start digging underneath the water, the the heretical doctrine that uh, that is underneath the water is immense. Usually, there's a a push against the sixty six book canon, or there is a push against the deity of Christ, or there is I mean, you just name your heresy. There's going to be something that is bigger than the right. lunar they Sabbath. They have a channel now to smuggle in other ideas. If I don't exactly. think clearly about this thing then right. I don't have to be think clearly about all these other things either. Which is really sad because the thing is, is once again, I think that you have good, you know, you have good Bible believing, uh, you know, Yeshua centered people who are just being led astray by internet scholars. And that's unfortunate. All right. We're going to call it right there. Uh, we hope that this video has helped you in some way. And uh, if you'd like to send us a video, see Hegg at TorahResource.com, C-H-E-G-G at TorahResource.com. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. That really does help us. I know that that sounds weird, but it does help us. And, uh, yeah, we will plan on being back next week for another Mystery a Bible Theater 3000. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.